Hi everybody and welcome to Fab Tax. I'm Rosemary and thanks for stopping by. In today's video, I have six more DIY planner ideas. And I say more because this is actually the second video in a series where I am doing budget-friendly planner DIYs using Dollar Tree, recycled, and upcycled materials. Like the first video, we have farmhouse, modern, and boho styles perfect for the upcoming season or year-round. There's a lot to cover, so let's go ahead and jump right in. For the first DIY, I will be using the handle of four Dollar Tree shovels, as well as a small organization box, and a mid-size basket with the handle. This is the one with the handle, also from the Dollar Tree, and I'll be painting all of those with some ultra matte black spray paint. To remove the handle from the shovel, you just go to the back of the shovel. There's a little screw there. Just unscrew that screw and the handle pops right out. Now here's everything once everything's been painted black. Here's the basket and the little organizer as well as the four shovel handles. Now all I'm going to do here is simply attach the, sh the shovel handles to the inside of the little organizer box with some zip ties. So what I'm going to do is just hold the pole to the inside corner of the little organizer and then I'm going to thread the zip tie through the holes in the basket. Now uh, in, on this basket I'll be doing the top holes, the mid, uh, some holes in the middle, and then some holes at the bottom. So I'll be applying three zip ties to this pole to hold it nice and securely in place. And you could also add a little E6000 to the top of the pole if you wanted to have a little bit better, a more secure hold. But these zip ties are working pretty good. I have not put um, any E6000 on these and, and they're holding up pretty well. But um, here you can just see I'm going through again in the middle and then I'll be adding another zip tie to that bottom row of holes. And I am doing this where the tie is on the outside and the little um, lock is on the inside. And then once all three are secured, I'll just go back and snip off those tails. But now I'll just do this for all the other poles. And again, here you see me just doing the last one and just clipping off that tail. And then there's the little base all set and ready to apply the top of the planter, which will be the little basket. And uh, this time I will be using some E6000 to attach the basket to the base. And here is the finished project. And by the way, this was a dupe, uh, something I saw online. Fortunately, I don't know what the name of the company was and I can't find it again, but in any event, it was uh, $6 for the Dollar Tree version and their version for that mid-size one, which is similar in size to this one at about 24 inches high is $79. And before I go on to the next DIY, I just wanted to point out how this little base makes a great base for a table as well. And here I have it with one of those Dollar Tree chargers, but you can use a pizza pan or a different type of tray and make a great little table. And you can paint it, of course, any color you wish. Now the next DIY is going to be similar to the first. It's going to use the same method of construction with a basket, a little box, and some um, poles for the legs. In this case, I'll be using some dowels. I wanted something shorter, so I'll be using the dowels from Walmart. And then I'll also be using these craft sticks. And I wanted to do this version because anytime I have wood to work with, I like to always keep the wood uh, look. And um, it bothered me the last time I had to paint them to make it look like the dupe. So I wanted to try a natural wood variation and let's see how it came out. Now in this one, I did again go ahead and paint the basket and the little organizer with the black spray paint. But this time, like I mentioned, I'm going to keep the uh, wood natural. Now I was going to stain it, but I didn't have any stain. So we're just going to go au natural on this one. And uh, for this little organizer basket, it doesn't have any holes. It just has those little slats. But they work out just fine and I again just put the dowel into the corner inside corner of the little uh, organizer basket and then I'm threading the zip ties again through the slots in the basket and just securing the uh, lock part on the back on the inside of the basket. So uh, I don't have those little holes again but uh, the slots are working out just fine and again I'm just going in with three of the zip ties and um, locking it towards the back so that that little nubby part is on the interior of the basket. And I'll just repeat this for all four of the legs. And then to add a little of that natural wood element to the basket, I just took some of these Dollar Tree uh, wood dowels. These are the small ones that they have there at the Dollar Tree. 
and I did use this tight bond glue which I typically love but I would not recommend it for this. I did have some problems with the uh, wood pieces popping off um, and so I would suggest either using hot glue or E6000 here to attach the craft sticks. Now once it's completed you can see how cute it looks and um, this is a different basket than the first one. This is the smaller basket and the slots have an oval shape uh, design to them. And uh, so then I'm going to just go ahead and add the base to the top with some E6000 glue. And now here you see the finished project. I think that wood just takes it to the whole next level. It looks like something you can get at Ikea or maybe one of the high-end stores like Anthropology or West Elm. Uh, but here is the original the from the inspiration piece, um, the first DIY. And let me know what you think in the comments. Which one do you prefer? The next DIY is a fun little upcycle using an old straw hat. Now I did have the perfect pot for this and I couldn't think where it was. I knew it was somewhere in the house. It was the perfect shape. I looked all over and then I realized it was actually on the fern that was on the plant stand from part one of this series. So old Fernie had to find a new home because that pot was just perfect. It fit perfectly inside this hat and then when I pulled the sides of the hat up it covered the pot completely and um, that is just kind of the combination that you're going to look for in some in a project like this and um, then all I needed to do was simply go ahead and glue the rim of the hat to the top of the planter. Now um, I did make a mistake at first and I didn't line up since this does have a little pattern to the hat I didn't line that up with the center and so I did have to pull that off and that's where you see those other glue splotches so you do want to make sure if you do have any patterns that you are lining them up properly with the pot. And so all I'm going to do is just, I glued the front and now I'm going to go directly across to the back and glue that as well, putting some hot glue to the top of the pot and then just holding that rim in place until the glue is set. And then basically what I wanna do is kind of go um, kind of north, south, east and west with my glue where I'm starting off the uh, gluing. So uh, I did there, you can see it's kind of north, south, east and west. And now I'm gonna go in between those and just fold the rim of the hat in and glue there as well. And I'm going to do that all the way around the rim of the hat. And then once all of my sections were glued down, I just flipped the hat over to cut out for the drainage holes and I used my utility knife to just uh, cut a hole in the top of the hat. And then I also had to use uh, some scissors to get in there and really get where all the drainage holes were. And so uh, once that was cut out and removed, I went back with some hot glue and just glued down the base as well as glued the edges of the hat or where I had cut so to prevent any fraying. And here is the finished project with a cute little begonia plant. And here you can see how cute it looks as well with a house plant giving both an eclectic boho style. The next DIY is part upcycle and part Dollar Tree. I'm going to be starting with this old toy tub that I've had for years and years and this uh, basket and wiffle ball bats from the Dollar Tree. Now everything eventually is going to be painted with the ultra matte white. However, I did want to start with some black paint on the front of my toy bin because I was recently reminded by the wonderful Nicole of the Weeks Nest in her latest video, which I will link below, of that excellent method of applying lettering by using stickers and then painting over them. Of course, I think it's probably not a good idea to do this method on a painted surface, but I wanted to give it a try anyway. And so I lined up my Dollar Tree letters to spell out the word flowers, and I did this on my ruler. This is a technique that I first saw from Kat. I'm not sure who the originator is, so I apologize But uh, if I got that wrong, but Kat was the first one I saw this from according to Kat. And um, it's a great method. You just line everything up so you can get it nice and even, and then you just apply your letters from there. And then I painted the entire bin with the white paint. I did leave the inside of the bin um, with the natural red because I didn't want the paint chemicals to get into the flowers. And so you can see here where everything is painted over. And now the idea is you simply peel off the stickers to reveal the base color underneath. And this method works like a charm, except if you do have a painted surface. So as I suspected, this is probably not the best method to use. Um, again, if it was about going just for the red underneath, it would have been great, but um, trying to paint that surface, I did have some of the paint come off with the stickers, but it wasn't too bad, and I was able to go back and fix it with some paint and a Sharpie marker. And then, ironically, once the letters were fixed, 
I went back and distressed them by just taking a dry brush of some of the white paint and lightly going over them. They were uh, previously distressed, but not the way that I wanted them distressed. So we had to fix them and then distress them. Next, I applied some black paint to the edges to give the bin a distressed enamel look. Now I'm going to take my wiffle balls and attach them to my basket using that same method from earlier with the zip ties. Now if I had gone in with the skinny end of the bat, which is what I was originally going to do, the regular zip ties would have worked just fine. But then I decided to use the fat end of the bat, and then I had to pull out the Mondo zip ties. Now, actually I did buy these at the Dollar Tree. Now, I have never seen them before or since, so not sure if they have these. Uh, but I do know that Lowe's does sell and Home Depot do sell um, zip ties this size. You just needed something larger for that um, fat end of the bat. And so I just go ahead and do the same thing. Again, just indicating maybe some E6000 if you prefer. And then again, using the zip ties. Uh, in this case, this basket had uh, two slots. And so I just used two of those large sized zip ties one on the top side and one on the bottom. And then here is the base with all four legs attached. And you can see here again, it makes a great little side table. If you prefer to use it in that way, you can add a top to that or leave it as is. And then you also see where I have applied some of the distressing here as well. And here it is with the bin on top and I just used some E6000 glue to attach it. And here is the finished project filled with some lovely flowers, ready to beautify any part of your home indoors or out. Next up are the first of the two hanging planners that we have in this video, and they are going to require three of the Dollar Tree metal hangers. I'm going to take off all of the chains, so all three of the hangers will have the chains removed. And then to give the planner a little bit more weight and substance, I'm going to put two of the planners together on the bottom. And I'm going to just kind of stagger where the sections go so that it makes a nice even um, distribution of all those kind of cross lines. And then I'm going to zip tie those again. This is a lot of zip ties in this video, but I'm going to zip tie the two together so that they create one unit for the base. And I'll be attaching a zip tie at every other one of the little kind of nubby things sticking up from where the uh, hooks attached on the hanger. So I'm just kind of scattering those zip ties around and then I'm going to go back with my wire cutters and just clip off those tails. I will be using the third hanging basket as a topper, but I'm going to leave that off at this time. Uh, one, because I have to paint them, and also because I need to fill it with a plant before attaching the top with some wire. I will also be using this Tupperware bowl that I also got from the Dollar Tree. This is that Betty Crocker one. This is the larger sized bowl, and I'm going to spray everything with some aged copper spray paint, including one of the chains. And here is everything once it's been painted. I have the base and the top, and then here is the bowl. And I'll just put that bowl right in top inside the base. And you'll see here where I will attach that eventually. But again, first I need to fill the planter with the plant. Before I do that, I'm going to just reattach my chain. Now, instead of applying it to the little hooks at the what was the top of my hanging basket, I'm now going to be hooking them onto what was previously the bottom right along that center ring. And then here is the finished project with the topper attached. Now this project is actually a dupe that was inspired by multiple other retailers including Magnolia and Wayfair. Because of the copper color, this DIY most closely resembles this product from a company called Terrain, but of course the Dollar Tree version costs about $6 to make while the Terrain version retails at about $58. Lastly, I have another hanging planter, this time using a Dollar Tree basket and a Dollar Tree mop head. So for this one, I'm going to be creating a version of macrame. We'll call it a version of macrame. And I'm going to start out by just removing some sections of the wire basket. This is where I just want to kind of leave uh, some open space so that I can get more of uh, a macrame look and that it's not just following the grid of the wire basket. I'm going to take two sections of the mop head, I'm going to crisscross them, and then I'm going to tie a knot. And that's about it. That's the extent of my macrame skills. Uh, from there, I'm going to just take that crisscross uh, piece of the mop head and attach the one end to that open section that I just created by cutting out a piece of the wire basket. 
securing it down with some hot glue. Then I'm going to take the other end of my little cross knot and do the same thing. Add a little hot glue and then wrap it around the rim of the basket. Then I'll take the other two ends at the bottom and um, go to the one corner of the basket where I again will apply some hot glue and then wrap the end. And then again to the other side, just applying some hot glue to that corner and then wrapping the string of the mop head. And there you pretty much have basically the only decorative element that I'm going to do here. Uh, pretty much the rest of this, I will do that, repeat that in other sections of the basket. But for the most part, I'll just be wrapping the wire of the basket with the mop head strings. And here you can see where I've done a good portion of the basket, just wrapping that string around uh, the wires of the basket, and uh, then also adding a few of those X elements as well. And let me show you again both of those, since I did run through that pretty quickly. So to wrap the wires of the basket, I just attached the mop string with some hot glue to the top, and then just simply began wrapping the string around the wire. And then I just kind of go over and under where it meets and continue all the way down to the bottom of the basket, going into the bottom uh, sections as well, wrapping around those until I come to a part where it already has some of the mop string. And then I just cut it off and glue it to wherever it is that it ends. So here I'm going to take it all the way down and down, make a left, and then I'm going to make a right, and then I'm going to take it down to that portion where it does meet. And um, simple as that, just add a little hot glue and then secure it with, um, you know, secure the string with the hot glue and then just snip off that end. And then I kind of clean it up as I go along, but at the end, my daughter did go back and clean off all of the fuzzies and made it nice and pretty looking. And then for these cross pieces, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just attaching uh, the beginning of the string with a little hot glue, securing it down, and then proceeding to wrap it all the way around and through, and then securing it again with some hot glue once I get to the other end. Now, if you want to see a great tutorial uh, with some real macrame skills, uh, definitely check out Marta's from Cuban Curls video. Uh, she does a great introductory to macrame tutorial and um, I will definitely link that in the description box below so you can check it out if you want to do the real thing. But back to what I guess you could call a macrame hack planter. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you again how I did that cross because dazzle you again with my macrame skills. So again, just doing the knot there in the bottom. What's nice about this knot, it kind of does move around for you. So um, I'm going to the upper corner of the section that I want to put it in. Now this is a smaller one than I did before. Um, so that's how I kind of did. I did two large ones and then two of these smaller ones on either side. And then what's nice is that knot kind of moves around on the string so you can get it nice and even. And then again, down to the corners where I'm going to just apply some hot glue and then wrap it um, as well, secure it all the way around and then just cut off those tails and that'll be my decoration. And then finally, I'm going to just wrap a string around the top rim to finish off that portion of the basket. And then once that was complete, I went back to create some handles. I just took three of the mop strands and I tied again one of my famous and spectacular knots there to the bottom. And then that creates a cute little kind of pom-pom there at the bottom. And I'm going to just add some glue there so that it kind of doesn't fray on the ends. And I'll trim that off a little more later on. But, um, you know, here, wait, I lied. I'm going to dazzle you some more with my incredible skill. So here I'm just doing a basic braid. Um, that's about the extent of what I can do braiding wise. Growing up, everyone was doing the French twist and the fishtails and the cornrows. And yeah, basic braid rosy. That's all you're getting. That's all I got. Then once I made and attached four of the braids all the way around the basket, I added some glue to the tops of the braids. Now, yes, this is a little bit of a hot mess, but it does work. And so um, what I did was I just kind of mashed those all together. And then I took two more strands of my mop head and created a hanging loop with those. And then I took the ends of that loop and just had, added them to the hot mess. 
And then I just wanted to make sure that all of my hangers were even and that my basket would hang evenly. And then once I was sure of that, I just continued to work that glue through, binding all the pieces together. And then I took some hot glue and brought, applied that to the end of the uh, hanger area and just began wrapping that now with new and fresh and clean and pretty looking strands of the mop head. So I used two here. Uh, I got you know about three quarters of the way up and then I did need to add a second strand. And so I just secured that first strand and it came back with a second strand. I did cut that off just to make sure that it had a nice clean edge to start with so the you know, transition was as seamless as possible and um, it's pretty forgiving this stuff so it, it worked out pretty well but then my camera cut off and so this is what the top piece looked like as a matter of fact this is what the entire hanger looked like once everything was complete and there i put in a pretty little plant in the planter like i mentioned my daughter went back and did clean up all the little fuzzies and here's the finished project and i don't know tell me what you think and i don't think it's too bad for someone with absolutely zero macrame skills and at best basic braiding capability. Originally I intended this video to have seven planter DIYs but the editing and the filming ran way too long so I'm going to publish number seven as a bonus video but here is a sneak peek of what I'm going to replicate. This ladder planter retails for about $186 but I think we can do it for a lot less. Well I hope you have enjoyed this second video of DIY planner ideas made from Dollar Tree recycled and upcycled materials. If you have not yet seen video one, I will supply a link in the description box below. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give us a thumbs up and please share with any family and friends you think would also enjoy this video. If you have a favorite or plan on making any of these, or if you have a question, please leave me a comment in the comment box below. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like what you see, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you join the family. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Fab Tax, where we're putting the extra in ordinary one DIY at a time.